There were so many incredible Star Wars Vision shorts going absolutely off the rails with its spectacle, making us feel all types of emotions and clearly influenced by the cinema that came before it. But then came T.O.B. 1. What I love about this short made by Science Saru is just how much it takes influence from the world of animation, the most obvious being Astro Boy. The manga and anime created by Osamu Tezuka tells the story of a robot with superhuman abilities called Astro, also known as Atom in a Japanese version. In this story, Astro was created to replace Tenma's son who unfortunately passed away in a horrific accident, and his name was Tobio, which is very similar to the name of our protagonist in this short. Even TOB1's master resembles the likes of Astro's eventual legal guardian, Dr. Ochanomizu, after our protagonist is abandoned by his creator and father, Dr. Tenma. But the references don't stop there. It doesn't just take influence from Japanese animation, it's also inspired from what was done in the West. More specifically, the 1940 Disney film Pinocchio, where it tells the story of a wooden puppet brought to life who dreams to one day become a real life boy, which is very similar to the premise of Science Saru's short. T.O.B. 1 dreams to venture outside the world he knows, to go on amazing adventures and hopefully become a Jedi himself, which is also exactly what Luke Skywalker dreams of doing in the original 1977 Star Wars film. And this is why I find this short so incredible, so masterful, because it is able to perfectly breathe aspects of early days of animation that eventually influenced everything that came after it. Astro Boy is by many considered to be the first shonen ever made. The idea that a young boy is naive and oblivious to the world around him, but also has the power to save people and do good. That any one of us can be special. That any young person in this world has the power to do something great, even if we're not supposed to, or rather told not to. We might not be what people wish we were, but we are also special in our own way and we can do great things. It's such a powerful message that's spanned across so many generations, so many cultures, eventually inspiring many others to continue its legacy. And no better is that conveyed than in this young boy who shook the entire world, the one named Son Goku. Which is why it comes as no surprise that Masako Nozawa, the voice actor for this legendary character, was chosen to be T.O.B. 1's voice for this short. The history of Japanese animation at its heart, at its purest, is all there. And just like we wanted to be like Goku, T.O.B. 1 wants to become a Jedi. But what fascinates me even more is how it seems to reference one of the most powerful animated works of art ever made. One that also comes from the same year that Pinocchio was released. One that also comes from Disney. The movie titled Fantasia. More specifically, the segment known as The Sorcerer's Apprentice. This tells the story of a young character that wants to be as powerful as his master and has the potential to do so. But because of his need to speed up the process, to not wanting to do the busy work, to not wanting to be patient and truly develop himself, he decides to cut corners and thus uses his sorcerer's powers to escape his own responsibility. But by doing so, he inadvertently causes chaos to his surroundings. He is not able to control the power he used, the power that can be dangerous if not harnessed well, the power that his master possesses so well. The apprentice learned a valuable lesson, one about patience, to trust in those who have been here longer and know better, providing us the clarity that with work, perseverance and time we can eventually get there. And this is also a big theme in T.O.B. 1. By not trusting his master, our protagonist succumbs to his own curiosity, to his need to become a Jedi as quickly as possible. And because of this, because of his impetuous actions, he inadvertently causes his home to be found by a Sith warrior, which ultimately leads to his master passing away, leaving T.O.B. 1 all alone. His immaturity, his need to speed things up, not truly caring about what his master was trying to do, led to his demise. It's actually quite tragic when you think about it. 
but this is also the moment that he decides that he will carry out his master's legacy and does whatever it takes to do so, with time, with patience, and then he is able to fulfill that dream, one where life is born from his own hands. It's then and there where our protagonist understands what the force truly is, understands what he was trying to find this whole time. It wasn't hidden under some rock in a far off place, it was inside him all along. He holds the potential to be whatever he wants to be, and thus starts to grow. It's here where we reach the most important part of the short, one where our droid finds himself in a very difficult situation, one where it seems he will most certainly lose. But through the force, his master descends towards our protagonist and finally calls him by his real name. <laughs> Not T.O.B. 1, but Toby. Almost as if it was Dr. Tenma accepting Astro as his own son. As if Pinocchio had finally become a real life boy. And Toby is now a Jedi himself. He isn't growing anymore. He has grown and is able to defeat the Sith Warrior. Ultimately learning that what's most important in life aren't the crazy adventures we undertake, but rather the good that we can do in our lifetime. Just like his master, had done before him. It's just brilliant. It seems so simple, and yet there's actually quite a lot of complexity hidden in its themes. The main one being the power of inspiration. Toby was inspired by his master, just like the people who made this short were inspired by all that came before it, breathing so many forms of animation, from west to east, stories that hold important and powerful messages that resonate for a lifetime, and had a massive impact on the stories and adventures that we know and love today. Just like I was influenced by the content creators that also made their own videos about every other Star Wars vision short. Seriously, go watch them. They are all so talented and do an amazing job to convey their thoughts and emotions with each one. If not for them, I would probably not be doing this today. And so, I can only hope to influence others in the same way. Because what matters to me the most is being able to impact this world through my own passion, through my own hopes and dreams, ones that have also been influenced by Star Wars itself, through the hopes and dreams that Luke had, the hopes and dreams that Toby now has, and eventually inspired the hopes and dreams that every single one of us have. Thank you for watching my video. I actually wanted to talk more about this in my original Star Wars Visions video, but wasn't able to. So when I found the opportunity to work on this, I couldn't help but show my excitement. I want to thank all of my patrons for supporting me thus far. You're slowly making this ambition of mine a reality. And thus, if you want to see more content like this, I would be forever grateful if you could support with any amount you can. It would also mean a lot to me if you could subscribe and hit that like button. And seriously, don't forget to watch the other Star Wars Visions videos part of this anthology series. Thanks again and I'll see you in the next video.